How rare is the April 2024 eclipse? This is the Saros Inex Panorama. Each square represents one of the 8,000 solar eclipses from the years 1208 BCE to 2161 CE. No two eclipses are quite the same. For a total solar eclipse like the April 2024 eclipse to occur, three independent motions of the Moon and Earth must coincide almost perfectly. First, and most obviously, the Moon has to be in between the Sun and the Earth. This happens on average every 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 2.9 seconds. This period is known as a synodic month. Of course, we don't see eclipses every 29 days. This is because the orbit of the Moon around the Earth is tilted relative to the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. So even if the Moon appears to be in between the Sun and Earth in an overhead view, it's actually usually too high or too low, causing its shadow to completely miss the Earth. For an eclipse to occur, the Moon has to be sufficiently close to the Earth's orbital plane. Twice per revolution, the Moon passes through the Earth's orbital plane at points called nodes, allowing for the possibility of an eclipse. This is where things start to get crazy. For an eclipse to actually happen, the Moon has to be between the Earth and Sun in our overhead view, and close to one of its two nodes, so it lines up nicely with the plane of the Earth's orbit. Because the plane of the Moon's orbit slowly wobbles, the location of the nodes shifts slowly throughout the year relative to the fixed background of stars. This slow nodal procession it means that one of the two nodes line up between the Earth and the Sun on average every 173.3 days, a little less than half a year. This creates on average two eclipse seasons per year, spaced a little less than six months apart. The eclipse prior to the April 8, 2024 eclipse was on October 14, 2023, a gap of 177 days. However, these two eclipses look very different. The April 2024 eclipse is a total eclipse, while the October 2023 eclipse is annular, where the Moon does not entirely block out the Sun. Clearly in both cases, the Moon passes directly between the Sun and Earth in 3D space, but the apparent size of the Moon has changed. This is due to the Moon's roughly elliptical orbit taking the Moon closer and further from the Earth. To make things nice and complicated, the Moon's tilted orbital plane also slowly rotates, shifting the location of the Moon's closest and furthest points around Earth, but not at the same rotation rate as the lunar nodes. All of this makes for three independent motions that must come together almost perfectly for similar eclipses to occur. First, we have the synodic month, taking the Moon between the Earth and Sun in our overhead view. Second, we have the nodes where the Moon passes through the Earth's orbital plane. This cycle repeats every 27 days, 5 hours, 5 minutes, and 35.8 seconds on average, and is known as a draconic month. Finally, it takes an average of 27 days, 13 hours, 18 minutes, and 33.2 seconds for the Moon to make a round trip from the closest point along its elliptical orbit and back. This is known as an anomalistic month. Taking all of this into account, how long will it take to see an eclipse similar to the April 8, 2024 eclipse? If we move forward one synodic month to May 8th, the Moon will again be in between the Earth and Sun in our overhead view, but 1.085 draconic months will have passed, meaning the Moon has moved too far away from the Earth's orbital plane for an eclipse to occur. We can see that our node and the Moon have drifted apart. Finally, 1.072 anomalistic months have passed, meaning the apparent size of the Moon has changed as well. Moving forward another synodic month, our cycles drift further apart, with two synodic months corresponding to 2.17 draconic months and 2.143 anomalistic months. We do see some reasonably close alignment after 12 synodic months, with 12 synodic months equaling nearly 13 draconic months. And in fact, there will be an eclipse on March 29th, 2025. However, since our cycles don't quite align, it will only be a partial eclipse. So how far forward in time do we have to go for our three cycles to line up again as in April 2024? Remarkably, it turns out that humans have known the answer for at least 2,000 years. This ancient Babylonian tablet shows a record of solar eclipses from 347 to 258 BCE. Each column advances by exactly the answer to our problem, 223 synodic months. As the Babylonians figured out through careful observation, after 223 synodic months, or about 18.03 years, our synodic, draconic, and anomalistic months all come back into alignment, producing a very similar eclipse. This 18-year period is called the Saros. 
Each column in the Saros Inex panorama shows a Saros series of very similar eclipses, separated by 223 synodic months. The April 2024 eclipse is part of Saros series 139. The next eclipse in this series will occur in April 2042. However, the length of the Saros does not line up well with the rotation of the Earth, equaling 6,585.32 days. This means that consecutive eclipses in a Sara series will not occur in the same location on Earth. Most of the April 2042 eclipse will occur over the Pacific Ocean. The next eclipse in Saros 139 will occur in April 2060 in Africa, and will finally return to the US in May 2078. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to wait 54 years to see another total solar eclipse in the contiguous US. Right now, there are 40 different Sara series in progress. Interestingly, since the synodic and draconic months don't line up exactly, Sara series do not go on forever. Saros 139 will last around 1300 years, starting in 1501 and ending in 2763. If we look further in time than the 223 synodic months that make up the Saros, for stronger alignment between our motions, we'll eventually land on 358 synodic months, being very nearly equal to 388.5 draconic months. This roughly 29 year period is known as an INEX. INEX series are very stable and will generally reliably predict eclipses for many thousands of years. Each row of the Saros INEX panorama shows the eclipses in a single INEX series. Since an INEX corresponds to 383.674 anomalistic months and not an integer value, not all eclipses in an INEX will look the same, often with every third eclipse being a total eclipse. Starting with the April 2024 eclipse and moving three INEX steps left and five SARA steps down, we find the upcoming 2027 August total solar eclipse, which will be mainly visible in parts of North Africa and the Middle East. Moving another three INEX steps left, we bump into the November 2030 total eclipse, which will spend most of its time over the Indian Ocean. In total, from the end of the year 2024 to the year 2050, there will be 56 solar eclipses. 17 of these will be total solar eclipses, and of these, only two will be visible in the contiguous United States, one in 2044 and one in 2045. I really love the Saros Inex panorama, but it's almost impossible to find. I made my own version as part of making this video. You can buy a poster at the link in the description below or get a PDF version when you join the Welch Labs Patreon. The panorama doesn't tell you everything about eclipses, but it does capture the regularities and confounding irregularities of solar eclipses in a really beautiful way. Getting this image together felt like an archaeological dig. The idea for the panorama came from the Dutch amateur astronomer George Vandenberg. Vandenberg was trying to make sense of a Polzer's canon of eclipses, an incredible 1887 catalog of 8,000 solar eclipses published by Austrian astronomer Theodor von Polzer widely recognized as one of the greatest computational feats of its time. A Pulsar's book has some really beautiful figures. I've also made a poster showing two of these that show all the eclipse paths from 2008 to 2053. Vandenberg's panorama is only available in a 1955 book that's incredibly rare. As far as I can tell, there are no copies for sale on the internet. And the closest copy to me appears to literally be at the Library of Congress. After briefly debating a trip to DC, I decided to make my own version of the panorama for this video. To my knowledge, this is the only high-res version of the Saros Inex panorama available. 